we skipped the, entire, the last part of chapter two, which is potentiometric electrodes. Although potentiometric electrodes are a very important part of electrochemistry, uh, uh, to do it justice would really require almost another course entirely. So we're going to skip over uh, the main part of the discussion of it, and if we have time at the end, we might discuss a little bit more. Potentiometric electrodes would be the kind of electrodes, less such as glass electrodes for pH measurements and so on. So we're going to skip over that entirely. But of course, I encourage you to read that material. Um, just as we're leaving, we're going to talk about, I want to talk about the conductivity of a solution because it has an effect on this liquid junction potential we've talked about. And also later on when we talk about voltammetric measurements or amperometric measurements where current flows, we want to know how conductive a solution is so we can understand how much uh, the potential will be dropped by resistance of the solution. Well, one way to, um, to characterize our solution is if we have a particular geometry, the conductance of our solution with a uh, abbreviation L is equal to a kappa times an area over a length. So suppose we had a tube of a particular area and the length of that tube. The longer the tube is, obviously the, the more the less uh, conduction will get through that solution, and the uh, narrower the tube is, the less conduction will get through the tube. So L is a conductance of that tube, and that would be in Siemens, or reciprocal ohms. So in other words, the more, the larger the area of that tube, or the, or the shorter that tube is, the more conductance will get through that particular solution. So you can kind of think about the conductance of a particular solution. If we have an electrode of a certain area, uh, the conductance of the electrode of the solution up to that electrode will be dependent on, the, say, the size of the, of, the, uh, of the electrode. And the smaller that electrode is, the, the, the lower the conductance will be. But really what's more critical is this term kappa which is the, um, the specific conductivity, and that would have units, specific conductivity. You might notice it's not the notes that I handed out, I'm just some, some new stuff here. It has units of reciprocal ohms, reciprocal centimeters, and so that uh, specific conductivity, the smaller that is, the less conductive we've got, the larger it is, the more conductive it is. What's the conduct conductance of our solution to be made, uh, dependent on? Well, obviously the specific conductivity, but the specific conductivity will be dependent on the ion mobility. The more mobile our ions are, the more charge they can carry. And the mobility of an ion is, is, oops, is often, uses the symbol U to indicate mobility. And the units of mobility would be centimeters squared per volt second. And so the more mobile an ion is, or how mobile it actually is, depends on the, uh, the, uh, the electric force. And the amount of force on a particular ion will be dependent on the charge of the ion. So that would be the absolute value of the charge on the ion. And the uh, two terms, one is the electronic charge or the charge on an electron. And the strength of the uh, electric field. So you can think, well, the more charge we've got in an ion and the higher the electric field, the more mobile, the more mobility we'll be expecting out of our ion. We're going to be able to drag that ion along through the solution. But there is another effect we have to consider about the mobility of an ion. That has to do with the, the drag on the ion. And since the ion is being dragged through a solution, not through a vacuum, we have to consider a drag force. And we can use the Stokes-Einstein equation to indicate that. And for a spherical particle, 
the drag would be equal to 6 pi eta times the radius of the system. So this would be the ion radius and this would be the velocity. So the more higher the velocity of the ion, the more the drag would be. So this is just the standard classical formulation of the drag of a spherical object. And so for a simple derivation, we can come up with the mobility of an ion would be the, the velocity over the electric field and uh, that would be equal to the charge on the ion times the electric, electronic charge over 6 pi eta r. I guess we didn't define the eta, that's the viscosity of the solution. So, so as we'd expect, the higher the electric field, the, um, uh, the uh, higher the velocity is, but then we have um, the effect on the, high, the larger, the smaller the radius, the higher the velocity, the mobility, the uh, higher the charge, the higher the mobility of our ion solution. Just to give you a, a brief glimpse, the ion mobility of um, hydrogen ions is uh, 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 centimeters squared per second per volt. Whereas uh, potassium ion, quite a bit less, 7.6 times 10 to the minus 4 centimeters squared per second per volt, and so on. So generally we'll find that solutions with, say, hydrogen ions are more conductive than the solutions with a potassium ion and due to higher ion mobility. Okay. Okay, well that's basically it for chapter two. What I thought we'd do now is stop here and ask you on your honor to uh, not use the next discussion to do your problem set. In other words, we're gonna start discussing the problem set, so I'd like you to basically think about having your problem set done before you watch the next part of the tape, if you're watching the tape. So what we'll do is, um, well, why don't we stop the tape for a minute, Rob? Let's um, get out.